Here, I'll extend the discussion of the integral form of mass conservation to look at the integral form of momentum conservation. And I will anchor this discussion in the same channel flow example. Momentum is mass times velocity. And Newton's second law says that, you know, for momentum to change, the rate of change of momentum is balanced by the forces on, on any particular body. So this is the form we applied to the infinitesimal fluid particle. In the integral form, we applied this in aggregate to the control volume. And you know, this can be any particular control volume as we talked about in, uh, in the integral form of mass conservation. And in, when we talked about mass conservation, you know, we saw that the net mass outflow rate through um, any control surface is given by that expression. Let's extend that to the net momentum outflow rate. Okay, so now I'm looking at the net momentum outflow rate through a control surface. And let me, you know, so let's consider first an elemental surface ds like that. The mass flow rate through that we saw was rho v dot n ds. And then I have to, you know, momentum is mass times velocity. So the momentum rate is going to be um, the rate, you know, mass flow rate times velocity. So I take the mass flow rate and multiply it by the velocity. So, you know, you have to do this, you know, you have to, uh, if you do this rigorously, you can say that, okay, that is right. So I'm, I'm doing it by analogy here. And then if I integrate it over this entire control surface, I will get the net momentum outflow rate through that surface. In the mass flow case, right, mass going out should be equal to the mass coming in for steady flow. In the, in the momentum conservation case, momentum going out minus momentum coming in is, is balanced by the forces. So you, you know, so this gives me an aggregate view of that term, and now I need an aggregate view of the forces on the, on the control volume. And the forces we are considering are pressure and the viscous forces. Let's consider the pressure first. On uh, on ds, you know, the pressure is going to be along the inward normal, so that's going to be p. So the magnitude of the pressure force is going to be p ds, and the direction is going to be in minus n because it's, you know, pressure acts along the inward normal. So if I write this that way, then that gives me the pressure force, the force is a vector on that elemental surface. And then if I integrate it over the entire control surface, I'll get the net pressure force on that control surface. Similarly, you do it for viscous uh, forces. I won't write the details and I'll just write this as F viscous. With the recognition that we know that you know the viscous forces, uh, viscous shear, for instance, is going to be related to the velocity gradients over there, and it's also going to be related to the coefficient of viscosity. And you know, that's we are assuming that the flow is Newtonian when we do that. Then we can write the aggregate view of F equal to ma as the net momentum outflow rate rho v dot n times v ds is balanced by the forces on the control volume. So the pressure force is p n ds, and then you have the viscous force on the control volume. And as before, this applies to any arbitrary surface within the flow domain. This is the form of momentum conservation that's going to be used, that is used by um, the ANSYS fluent solver. Now we have seen the equations that go on fluid flow, and we need to add boundary conditions in. 
And we'll solve these equations using ANSYS Fluent. But before that, before we get into the CFD case studies and actually solve these equations using ANSYS Fluent, we need to get an we need to have an idea of you know what is the strategy used by the Fluent solver to solve these equations, and it'll use the finite volume method. In the big ideas in CFD, I will discuss the you know the strategy used in the finite volume method to solve these equations numerically. Don't go away.